Hi, my name is Paul Rountree and this video is going to give you a short overview of how to use the Flute Plus gadget uh, for use with the Vectric programs VCarve Pro and Aspire. I'm going to be doing it with VCP right now, but it works exactly the same way in Aspire. The same place that you downloaded the Flute Plus gadget uh, from my website, you can get the sandbox file that I'm going to be working with today. And in this image, you can see some of the uh, tool paths that you can generate with the uh, Flute Plus gadget. And I'll show you how that works right now. If you go to the top view of where the vectors are laid out, this is what uh, is provided in the file. There's a bunch of uh, one-dimensional vectors that are shown here. These are all drawn with the Vectric tools. Uh, there's a bunch of closely spaced vectors. We'll use those in a few moments. The whole idea of the Flute Plus gadget is to give you a way of controlling how the Z of the tool moves up and down as you swing the uh, from the start of the vector to the end of the tool path. And it gives you more control than you might be able to do with VCP by itself. And I'll show you how that works right now. We need two vectors to make this happen. The first is called a profile. That tells us how the Z of the cut is going to change as you move from the start to the finish of the cut. The other thing is what we call the rail, and the rail tells you where on the material we're going to put that profile. And I'll give you an example right here. Let's imagine that we wanted to take this shape and we want to put it in, onto a straight line. So we first select the profile, and then we select the rail. And if you look here at the bottom, there's a vector that draws straight across left to right. The starting point of both of these is on the left and on the left here. So I've selected the profile first, then the rail. I go up to the gadget, I run that, and this is the dialog box. The first thing it tells you is that there's one rail, that's the horizontal line, and we're going to be putting the flute along it. I'm going to pick a wide tool. Let's go for a wide half inch end mill just for something that's very easy to see. Tool path name, you can type any name you want here. This is uh, up to you just to identify it. If this is checked on the right hand side, that means that every time it goes to make the, the new tool path, it will erase anything called strange shapes. And so as you converge your design towards what you're finally working at, it'll continually replace the old versions and you don't have to manually delete that. We're not going to worry about roughing passes for now. There's uh, five different ways that you can take that profile and project it onto the rail. And the real question is, how do you? what do you do when the two lengths aren't the same? If the profile is shorter, what we're going to do right now is we're going to stretch it to the length of the rail and alternatively we'll compress it. So they always match out exactly in, in length. As is means that if the profile is shorter, you stop the tool path at the end of the profile. Truncate means you stop the, uh, the profile when you get to, to the end there. And we'll, I'll show you some examples. The shape of the, the flute that we're pushing onto the rail is controlled by th these three numbers, the start depth and the flute depth, say how deep you're going into the material, and the profile steps is how many steps we need to describe the curve. If you have too small a number of steps, it's going to look rough, it's not going to follow exactly what you had uh, described, and if you have too many, then you're just wasting time and memory. It takes a long time to calculate these things. Between 20 and 200 is usually good for this. So we've so set this all up, now I'm going to say calculate does it very quickly and here now is the tool path called strange shapes that we can look at. So if we reset the preview, run that tool path and now we see the shape of that profile has been put onto that vector going from left to right. This might look like what you would want for doing lathe work for example where the tool is moving up and down in Z as the carriage is moving along the axis of a spindle, for example, to make some kind of a, a banister or something like that. You can project just about any vector onto any vector. So one of the things you can do is take, for example, a circle, and if we look at the start point on this one, the start point is at the top, so this vector starts high, goes low, goes high again, and if we project that onto this same vector at the bottom, Go up and run the gadget. It remembers between uses your parameters, so all of these things stay the same unless you change them. And uh, well, you're going to use that same bit and say go. 
and here is our curve that starts high, goes low, returns high. It's a perfect sine wave for making very, very smooth shapes. Okay. If you wanted to, you could project another shape, like a hexagon, onto that. And now you get a segmented, stepped curve, which is probably not so useful, but you can do it. It probably gets more fun when you start looking at more complicated shapes. So for example, one of the things you can do is project a circle onto a circle. And just to see that a little bit more easily, I pocketed around that, and you can see this nice outside profile that's drawing like a a ring around the center post. Okay. You can select more than one rail at a time, and so with this series of of lines, we can treat them all as a group and select them all, but you always select the profile first. And now we go and run the program. I'm going to select a finer tool now. I'm going to go to a ball nose that's about a quarter of an inch across. And now it's taken that profile shape Remember what it looks like, sort of two maxima, and then it goes into this little loop. And there's the first, the second, and in here it comes out. Okay, And that's been done for each one of those rails, adapting the length of the profile to the, exactly the, match, the length of the rail that we're using on that design. Okay. If you want, this is a good chance to see what the other options look like. If we say use as, as is, or truncate. Now we're using the length of the profile as long as it isn't, uh, even if the rail is longer. And if it's the, the rail is too short, we just chop off the profile. So it gives these more smooth, uh, less varying curves. Okay. And then the vectors stay selected, so we don't have to go back and change this all the time. So here, they've been used as is, and then here, they're compressed when the rail is too short for the system. So you, you can choose whatever you want to, to use to make it look like what you're after. Okay, We can project that circle over onto all those vectors. not changing anything, so just go. And now you're starting to carve these sine waves into the material in whatever mode you feel is what you want. Okay, so it's very easy to do and it works very, very well. When you're doing this sort of thing, so one of the problems that you may run into is that as you do the uh, the curves and the oops, that you have to start thinking about how you're going to rough out this pattern, and that's something that we don't normally think about in two-dimensional work, but in three dimensions, you've really got to think about it a lot. And so, one of the things you can do is have it make roughing tool paths for you. And so now, when I check that. If the depth that I've got here of 1.5 inches is more than the step down depth of the tool that I'm using, and in this case, the step down is only an eighth of an inch, now what it's going to do, it's going to create roughing passes and gradually move its way down into the material. It takes longer to calculate, but it means we're not going to break bits as we try and plunge to, if we tried to go to deep depths with the single cut. And so now, just to show what that does, I'm going to animate 
this and now you'll see it start to move its way down into the material. Step by step it just grinds its way through. Okay. The other thing you can do is that if you are roughing out material quite often you're going to be using a larger bit than what you use for your final toolpath. And so you can increase this number, what's called the rail skip count, to let's say two. Now, for the roughing passes, it will skip every other line. And we have a lower density of lines here because quite often we're using a wider tool or a more robust tool and you don't need the precision during the roughing passes. And so now when you run that toolpath, it's rougher, but that's okay because we can recalculate a finishing pass with whatever tool we want, and uh, you've saved a lot of time by doing this kind of optimization. Now we're done. So I think that's most of what the uh, Flute Plus gadget will do for you. Uh, it, this little video doesn't uh, replace reading the manual, but who wants to read this stuff? And uh, it seems to work fairly well for most types of vectors. There's other examples that are provided that show how to carve out a bowl exterior shape and to get the roughing toolpath set up and things like that. So cruise through the examples and if you have any questions, let me know on the forum. Bye-bye now.